All right, welcome back to the VOC YouTube channel. Uh, I got a different setup. I'm back home for the weekend filming. So that'd be kind of cool to give a little different setup. I'll probably do this time from time when I'm home on the weekends, sometimes on the weekends, just to see what's different. Um, like I said last video, I'm gonna do uh, NFL on Tuesdays. I'm gonna do college on Thursdays. So today's gonna be a college football video. Uh, jump into it here with college football look I think that there are two teams right now that are the most dominant teams in college football and clearly they are the two best teams and I, I don't think there's any teams right now that are better than than they are um, you know I said last week Alabama's not my number one team they're not right now they're my number two team but them and Georgia are clearly to me right now four weeks in the best teams uh, in the in the country, uh, I think that they'll both be undefeated for the SEC championship game, and I think that we are on a collision course to see them in the playoff. I, they'll both be in the playoff. I think if they both get undefeated uh, to the SEC championship game, it's a fairly close game. I think we'll see them both in the playoff. We can potentially see them both in the national title game. That's just how good I think they are. I think that they are so much better than all the other teams in college football right now that uh sorry my grandmother of course i forgot to turn the ringer off uh fucking grandma jesus christ uh no so yeah i think right now there's clearly two teams that are top of everybody else i think it's alabama and georgia and i don't even think it's a question i'll talk about alabama a little bit. i'll talk about it back actually about them both a little bit later because they both have big games this week but I just wanted to come in and say, look, I think that they are the two best teams, and I don't think there's teams out there right now that could could fucking beat them, put their pants on and go out and beat them. They're clearly the two best teams. <clears throat> I also want to talk about Clemson's troubles. Clemson's now 2-2 two and two on the year. <clears throat> I think we thought after week one, after they lost to Georgia, okay, Georgia's a really good team. Clemson lost to them. Clemson's going to win out in the ACC, you know, and they're going to make the playoff. Oh my fucking god. Now my Apple Watch. I forgot to fucking turn that ringer off. Jesus Christ. Are you fucking kidding me? I, these fucking videos are a shit show. I have no clue what I'm doing and something always fucking goes wrong. Um, fuck me. Alright, so to go into Clemson, they're 2-2. Two and two. They're, They slipped all the way to 25 in the polls, which is crazy to me to think that Clemson is number 25. Uh, they lost to NC State last weekend. I just don't. I don't get why that they're. I don't get why they're so bad. If we look at them recruiting, they're very good. I mean, they've been top five in recruiting for a while now. You know, I know that they lost their offensive coordinator. Their one of their co-offensive coordinators a couple of years ago uh, to USF. He went to be a head coach, and he was like one of the first guys to really leave Dabo. And you know, you wouldn't have thought it'd been that big of a deal, but. You know, did Trevor Lawrence cover up a lot more with this program than we than we thought? You know, I think clearly Dabo and Jesus are not on the same page right now. With uh, you know, Dabo did something to God up above, and God is uh, striking down the fucking thunder on him right now. It, it's it just whatever Dabo did to piss off God, it's fucked with this football team. It, it really has. So Dabo, you need to go pray. You need to put your hands. To God and just you just need to get back to where you were because right now you're nowhere close to it you don't look like Clemson you don't even feel like Clemson I said that last week I said this Clemson team feels like you can go in and beat them any day of the week never felt that before feel that now uh, but Clemson just not what they are I don't get it it's one of those things I don't it just doesn't make sense but this college football season is wacky I think it's even it's gonna get even wackier and Dabble pissed off God. Uh, okay, so going into the games of the week now, some pretty big games now as we move into week five and the college football season is slowly getting slowly getting going here. I don't even know if that makes fucking sense. That doesn't. Uh, so as it gets into the meat of conference games, meet into some pretty good games, a big game this week in my opinion, I think this might be the biggest game of the week that... People aren't talking about the game. People are talking more about the coaches uh, in this game, and that's Alabama versus Ole Miss. Now, I'm one of those people. I'm all above the lane train. Choo, 
choo-choo. Give me fucking Lane Kiffin. I love Lane Kiffin. Lane Kiffin, to me, he is a way better coach than what he was eight or nine years ago. He is now, a, he's now actually a coach. Before, he was just a guy that was a very talented coach, but just didn't get coaching. He was just really talented at it, so everybody gave him a shot. Now he actually knows how to fucking coach. And Mike Wilbon from ESPN this week, who I don't even know where the fuck this came from. This is the most... I, it's lazy journalism, in my opinion. Um, I don't, you know, I've been in this business never. I haven't even been in this fucking business. But to call it a established journalist like Mike Wilbon, who is usually a very good journalist, I'd say one of the best in the business. But I just thought this was lazy journalism on his part. He called Lane Cliff, he called Lane Kiffin a clown and an embarrassment to every school he's ever been involved with. And he said... Nobody wants Lane Kiffin as a coach, and he pointed like nobody wants Lane Kiffin to have the emblem right here. Bullshit, Mike. There is multiple schools out there that would hire fucking Lane Kiffin in a heartbeat. And I feel like there's a lot of people at SC fucking wish they had him right now. They'd much rather be 3-0, and number 12 in the country, and have a fucking offense that is electric. And have a guy in Matt Corral, the quarterback, who's a Heisman frontrunner. I think USC would fucking sign up for that shit right now, Mike. So to sit here and call it Lane Kiffin. And Lane has been, he's been Lane Kiffin. He went on Twitter and said something funny as fuck. And now he's kind of, he was on Mike, uh, fuck. He was on Paul Feinbaum yesterday. He was on Dan Patrick's Day and he was talking about it And he just said he doesn't get it. Why? He said he's never even talked to Mike Wilbon. He came out of nowhere. Like I said, I think it's. I think it was poor journalism, something that didn't need to be said, and something that if you really looked at Lane Kiffin and where he's kind of been as a coach the last five, six, seven years, you'd understand he's not a bad coach. He's a really good coach. Um, if you look at Alabama's offense, where it is, it's Lane Kiffin. Uh, what he did at FAU, really good. What he's doing at Ole Miss, really fucking good. Uh, I don't – look. Now, Nick Saban has never lost to an assistant. He's 23-0. and I don't think Ole Miss beats them. But Old Miss last year in their game scored 48 on them. I think Old Miss can score 40 on them again. Um, I think it's going to be high scoring. Uh, like I said, I think Old Miss is getting there. They're just not there yet to beat Alabama. But I think this could be a very fun electric game. And Paul Feinbaum said it too. He said he believes the only coach that can get into Nick Saban's head is Lane Kiffin. I believe it too. So. Look, Lane goes out there, especially in a game like this, he doesn't give a fuck, and he's going to go out there with everything he has and just say, fuck it. We, you know what, we're going to have fun. I'm going to do it my way. Fuck everybody that said shit about me. Watch me do what I do. And I think it's going to be a fun game, but I do think Alabama beats them. Um, the other big games, there's three more I want to talk about. The next game I'm on to is Notre Dame-Cincinnati. Look, I'm a Notre Dame fan. I didn't think we'd beat Wisconsin. Um, the fact that they beat Wisconsin to me was really a surprise because I didn't think the Notre Dame team this year was going to be that good. I thought maybe nine wins if we could get there with the schedule we have. And I thought Wisconsin would beat us. And when, and when Cos... Fucking... I can't even say Wisconsin. Wisconsin fucking did beat us for majority of the game until Chris Tyree returned that kick. And I think that deflated Wisconsin. But Notre Dame's defense played way better than I thought it would. I was very skeptical of Marcus Freeman after the first three games. Um, but I think he's found it. Maybe we took whatever luck and praise that Dabo had with Jesus and God. Maybe we got that this year. But I will say I'm going to be a normal fan. Not a normal fan. I'm going to be a realistic fan. They played Cincinnati, a really good fucking team. Um, I think Cincinnati beats them. Look, I just do. I, this Notre Dame team, to me, right now, they're good, but they're not good enough to beat a team like Cincinnati. And I think Cincinnati is just too good. And I think that Cincinnati beats Notre Dame. I don't know by how much. I think the line's one and a half. I, I think it's going to be closer than people think. But I think it's one of those where it's close, and I think Cincinnati slowly pulls away at the end. Like they did against against Indiana, it was kind of close, and then they kind of pulled away at the end. I think that's how it's going to be. Um, this is a big game for Luke Fickle going against Marcus Freeman, who is essentially one of his best friends, his old defensive coordinator. And then Marcus Freeman going against his old team. 
It's at Notre Dame, but I just don't think Notre Dame has the firepower to win. I hate saying it as a Notre Dame fan, but I have to be realistic here. I just don't think they have what it takes to beat Cincinnati. Uh, I'm going to go down to flip-flop these games. I'm going to go into the Michigan-Wisconsin game now. And people are going to be like, well, Caleb, why would you ever talk about this fucking game? Look, I think this is a very pivotal game in the Big Ten. And primarily on Michigan's side of the Big Ten. Because Michigan comes in 14, ranked 14th. They're 4-0. Rutgers kind of battled with them. Rutgers is a better team than a lot of people fucking think. I don't think people get that Rutgers is kind of decent. And Greg Schaun is a really good fucking coach. But I did see some flaws in Michigan. That was like the first time I really sat down and watched a Michigan game. Um, you know, we've heard all year about the run game. Run game looks really good. Passing game is kind of a concern. So that's why I think, to me, this is a bigger game than a lot of people think. Wisconsin is 1-2. and two. Um, They're playing at home. They just got beat by Notre Dame, who I think all in counts, they really thought that they could beat. But look, this is Wisconsin's great run defense. They fucking stuff Notre Dame. And Michigan can run the ball. This fucking game can be a lot better than I think a lot of people think. Now, I think Michigan will beat them just because I just don't think Wisconsin offensively has it. But I think this could be a really good game, and that's why I wanted to highlight it because say Michigan does lose, which I don't think they will, but if they did lose, I mean, then that that whole side gets really shaken up because it's like it, it's getting into that. I feel like the Big Ten's getting into that where it's, I don't want to fucking win it. I don't want to fucking win it. I don't want to fucking win it. Like, our team's going to give it away, and if Michigan doesn't win this game, it's going to feel like a giveaway. It's going to feel like they just gave the game away to Wisconsin. So I think it could be a way better game than people fucking think. Uh, the last game I'll talk about here, Georgia-Arkansas. Number two, Georgia versus number eight, Arkansas. Look, I said last week I thought Arkansas's fairy tale, fairy tale fucking season was over. I was fucking wrong. I didn't think that they'd beat Texas A&M. I didn't. They have a fucking tough schedule. They had Texas and m now they have Georgia. Look, I am 99.9% .9 guaranteeing this week the fucking fairy tale's over for Arkansas. Arkansas will lose to Georgia because Georgia is so fucking good, it is ridiculous. They, I think they were up 35 nothing in the first quarter. It was either 28 or 35 nothing to fucking Vandy last week in the first fucking quarter. Georgia is so fucking good. It's scary. Um, so I think, look, Arkansas has had a great year. They beat Texas A&M, who I didn't think that they'd beat. But I just don't foresee them going into Georgia beating them. Game day's there. Everybody's fucking talking about you now. Last week, people were talking about you, but it was more or less of like, you know, like I did. Oh, you know, Arkansas, they've had a cute year. Can they keep it up? Probably not. Well, you fucking did. Now, you, it's legit now. Can you fucking win a game? I don't think they can. But, look, they've had a good year. They continue to have a good year. It looks like the way that they've fucking played, they can beat a lot of teams. They're just not, in my opinion, they're not good enough to beat the Alabamas, and they're not good enough to beat the Georgia and the SEC. And those are the teams you need to beat if you want to get anywhere. So, you know... Uh, those are the games I wanted to go through. Talk about Clemson a little bit. Look, like I said earlier, Dabble fucked over Jesus and God somehow. He hurt him bad, and they're hurting him. And uh, I think Alabama and Georgia are clearly the top two teams, and I do not think it's even fucking close. It's taking me like 12 takes to get this. I'm going to be all goofy. I'm going to be like all those other fucking dudes. Make sure to subscribe, like, share. Show all your friends. Gla da da da. YouTube, YouTube, my channel, my channel, my channel. Thanks for watching.